Hi, welcome to this edition of the Java Podcast. Uh, today we're going to talk about security advances in the Java SE platform. I am Kevin Strohmeyer, Group Marketing Manager here at Sun. I am joined by uh, Bill Kirchie on the phone, I think, out of uh, San Diego today, sitting at the beach. Uh, he's the Java Marketing Manager, and Roger Callan, Director of Java SE Sustaining and Support. Uh, so I understand there's some recent news concerning uh, security on the Java SE platform. Bill, could you fill us in? Yeah, absolutely, Kevin, and thank you very much for the introduction. You're absolutely right. We're, we're happy to talk about the fact that we have a couple of security advances for the Java SE platform. The first that I'm happy to talk about is a new advanced notification um, process that we have for our security updates. What this is really about is it means that system administrators of all shapes and sizes, whether you manage one system or thousands, right. you can right. sign up to find out in advance when we have plans to release security fixes for the Java SE platform. This is brand new for us. Historically, you had to wait until the releases were available and then find out about what was contained in them. So we really believe this is going to allow folks a better opportunity to plan their system maintenance and upgrades. But that's just one of the key um, advancements that we're making today mm -hmm. and talking about today. The other is we're going to start delivering synchronized fixes across the Java SE 6, 5, and 142 release families. Wow. This has never been done by Sun before. But I'm sorry, Kevin, did you have a question about no, that? No, I was just saying, wow, that's, that's exciting. That's, uh, that's a lot of work. Well, it, it you're absolutely right. With each one of these platforms, we test over 100 different configurations, or, or at least close to. Roger, I'm sure, will correct me um, on the exact number because his folks are, are very much involved in that. Um, but the complexity and the amount of testing involved is incredible. But the net benefit we feel outweighs the cost and investment. Ultimately, by delivering synchronized fixes, it means that businesses or any user can have access to the same fixes all at the same time. So now with the ability to both get advance notification as well as get the fixes to what we believe will be the majority, if not all, the versions of Java that people are using today, means that they can proactively react, plan, and implement consistent security measures for their operations, whether, again, it's a small uh, one-person shop all the way up to large enterprises. Right, and uh, Bill, one of the items that uh, we will be moving forward with next year is also to include 131 in this model. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, so for this, um, for, for the initial release, it's focused on the 6, 5, and 142 right. release families. Starting in 2008, we expect to incorporate the 131 family into that synchronized release process. Well, it simplifies okay. things for, uh, for IT shops, I think. Yeah, it, it's, you know, because one of the big feedback, one of the big pieces of feedback we receive from people using Java in their production environment is that they're using very often more than one version. Right. While very often they're, they're happy to use the latest, especially on their desktops, but, you know, chances are that they're going to have a mix of newer and older versions that are being used in business. Um, but that really brings up an important subject. We're looking ahead at quite a few additional enhancements that we can make and that we're hoping to make for businesses, corporations, anyone using job and production environments. And my colleague, Roger Kalnan, is heading up those efforts. And I'm wondering, Roger, maybe if you could tell the folks a little bit more about the things um, you and your team are working on. Right. So this is, uh, to a large extent, the first step in uh, a number of changes we are envisaging uh, take place over the next year, year and a half. Uh, we've been working with uh, enterprise customers, um, with ISVs, talking to some of the 
uh, industry analysts to understand you know, what is it that w we can do to cut down the cost of enterprise uh, Java. Um, companies are now using Java across their desktops. They're using it uh, in their uh, lab situations where they, they can't afford downtime. So what we want to do is allow them to have a better way to manage the change uh, that we provide to them in the form of um, more robustness, extra fixes, security issues, and other important changes and allow them to um, enable that change on, to some extent, their timetable and also in, in a way that allows them to manage the change and the risk of those updates. Great. And how much notification uh, will we be giving customers? Uh, for, the, for the security issues, we're looking, I think it's Bill, um, up to about a week. Exactly. Yes. We're, we're, that's exactly right. Yeah, and for for the new efforts uh, around the using uh, Java in production, we'll be looking to uh, again give uh, enterprises a way of un better understanding uh, what releases are out there, what are releases are applicable to, to their um, desktops and servers, and uh, as soon as those are available, they will be able to download the changes and incorporate them within their. Infrastructure, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a in a minute, and how that fits into some of the uh, Sun Connection services that we're also um, working with you on. Yep. Excellent. So one item that uh, it's worth mentioning is, uh, as I talked about earlier, uh, what we're looking at is enabling enterprises to. Uh, sort of choose the amount of change at some level that they're willing to take on. And that, uh, from the uh, customers that we've talked to, really depends on their application lifecycle. Uh, earlier on, in an when they're developing an application, uh, they're willing to take on change. They want to take on the latest updates. But as it goes into deployment, what they're looking at is how can we cut down the amount of change uh, on to a frame, uh, sort of a, a level that's acceptable to them and on a timetable that makes so sense. So whether on a weekly or a quarterly, whatever that build schedule is for... Um, yes, what, what we'd be looking at is um, uh, you'd be able to sort of choose the amount of change that makes sense for you and uh, and depending on how long you will want to stay on an update that you can, in effect, get to a point where you're only receiving the critical fixes to keep those uh, your programs up to date um, uh, for security issues and also other critical issues that we find. And minimize any testing they have to do after that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the goal here is to reduce the amount of testing. We, as, uh, as Bill was talking about earlier, have extensive test infrastructure that we need to run through, but the goal here is to enable enterprises um, to um, better manage in a more cost-effective way the Java they have across the, the enterprise. Roger, it, it also sounds like part of this is about giving um, our customers a, a bit um, more ability to plan and, and schedule things. Is there anything more you could say about that in, in some of the things you're working on? Um, yes, that's uh, an important aspect here. Historically, uh, we've provided uh, enterprises and, well, the whole community with an understanding um, uh, of when updates will come out at a very general level. We've sort of given people a sense of the frequency, say, of updates. Uh, and what we're doing here is um, wanting to have a better model where people can better predict when an update will come out. And also, um, people won't have to move immediately to an update. They'll be able to time when they move to that update and um, assess the amount of change in an update and move there appropriately for their, um, their schedule.